Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what Richard Bandler, or how Richard Bandler rather, is using nested loops inside this YouTube video. And for those of you who have been studying NLP, one of the most fascinating techniques is the use of nested loops and nested communication. And there is none better than Richard Bandler to study nested loops. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on this. And you'll notice that he goes right into storytelling. And I'm going to pause at different points inside the video to share with you from uh, the NLP coach perspective, what is Dr. Bandler doing so that you can have a better understanding of how nested loops work. You that have uh, been in Steve's Connie Ray's training, uh, there's a little concept that's always fascinated me in, uh, I guess it was about 19, about 19, I forget what year it was, one of those years, 1977, 78, something like that. They uh, was watching television. I was, you know, on the road and I was sitting there and they had this little flick on and they were, they, they had made this on uh, PBS uh, and it was about Einstein. It was his 100th birthday, something like that. And so they made this little uh, uh, little flick about it where they had uh, <clears throat> they had two brothers that were identical twins. One was on Earth and the other was in a spacecraft. And he was outside a black hole in space and he was about to go into it. And uh, they were trying to explain the concept of relativity of time. Now, one of the things that's always fascinated me since I very first found out about Milton. Okay, so in true Richard Bandler style, he always communicates hypnotically in everything that he does. So without telling you what he's going to be teaching you, he tells you hypnotically what he's going to be teaching you. So when you're learning nested loops, what you want to start to pay attention to is when does the communicator start a new story within the original story? And what you'll notice is that at those moments where they either start a new story or stop another story, they're seeding information. Now, Dr. Bandler's done a lot more than that. I know that within that brief minute or two, it doesn't look like he's done all that much, but he's already set up a couple of anchors and analog to mark certain things for the participants in the seminar. But for now, all I want you to think about is when he starts and stops a new story, what was the word that he's, or the sentence or phrase he said? When he started the new story, he said, they were trying to explain the theory of the relativity of time. So he basically hypnotically told us, we're about to learn about time distortion. Now, one of the things that's always fascinated me since I very first found out about Milton, and when I first found out about him, I took his book, Advanced Techniques of Hypnosis and Therapy, and uh, all the articles that I could find, and every claim he made about anything he had done with hypnosis, what we did is we recapitulated it. It was that, see, most people would try and disprove a theory. For modelers, we only want to know how do you do things. When I went down and talked to Milton, uh, one of the primary things that I did was I sat there and I went through the book because there were some things that he said he did, but he didn't give examples of how he did it. So it wasn't clear to me, for example, one of the things I didn't know was he induced colorblindness in someone. And he actually describes, in the book, he, said, he describes inducing colorblindness covertly. Now, I thought to myself, you know, how, you know, it's like not very covert to go, you cannot see colors anymore. But to induce trance, and once you had a deep enough trance, you can kind of covertly induce anything. But I wanted to know how he did it. So <clears throat> what I did with Milton is I, I, he has a trance chair in his room, the official trance chair, and then two other crotchety folding chairs so that if you start to move, it goes so he can get body catalepsy immediately by holding you still. <laughs> what I did is I'd have him sit there and whether there was... So right away we're into the second story about Milton Erickson and learning from Erickson about how he did deep trance phenomenon of color blindness. So what he's doing here is he's setting something up, in my opinion, and I think, you know, obviously you would want to hear from him if possible what he's doing because he's always communicating, especially in this example, in multiple levels. Uh, but he's setting up a story within a story about how to learn hypnotic, how to induce hypnotic metaphor covertly from a hypnotist.
And so what he's doing is he's setting up the audience to be able to learn how to learn hypnotic phenomenon covertly, or how to induce it covertly. And while he does this, you'll also notice he embeds uh, the suggestion, induce catalepsy, so that he could induce it, dot, 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 right? He, he analog marks these suggestions. If you rewind and watch, you'll see him uh, analog mark with his body, gesture in the same direction, uh, the words induce catalepsy. So he can get body catalepsy immediately by holding you still. In the same direction. What he's doing when he's analog marking like that is he's marking out these suggestions for, in my opinion, in this context, an individual listener within the seminar. But we can analog mark certain commands so that the unconscious picks up on them. It's called anchoring. So let's go deeper into this. If there was other people in the room, I'd have them do it with them. Otherwise, I'd tell them just to hypnotize the chair because he's always going to hypnotize me anyway. I'd know it, but if he faced the chair and did it, he was much more exaggerated about the parts that were analog marked because he would have to turn towards me a little bit more. So that way I would know the parts that he was marking out by his tonal shift. So as he went, you know, it goes, as he went into his routine about what, it, what is a blue Monday? Blue doesn't mean anything at all. Now, as, as he began to examine the thing about, about color blindness and stuff, the one thing is, is Milton did a whole little separate book on time distortion. And I became fascinated with the things about time because one of the things was that, that I decided to sort of take it to the limits. Because as I, was, as I was going back and I left Phoenix after I had him, do thing, had him do this time distortion thing with somebody there, and I was flying back, I got off, and I lived about at the time about an hour and a half from the San Francisco airport. So here we are into story number three. So he gave us this opening introduction about introducing time distortion, then he goes into the story about Milton setting things up about how to learn to hypnotize covertly, uh, induce hypnotic phenomenon covertly, and it's funny because as he's explaining, he's doing, and then he, go he goes into the third story. And in the third story, uh, he starts to talk about driving down the, sh the, the highway. You're going to hear a lot of <clears throat> embedded commands for, I went down, I walked down, I drove down. A lot of, uh, he, he's almost always hypnotizing and deepening and <clears throat> like a, a lot of what he's doing as well is with the rhythm and tone of his voice that he's doing. So there's a lot that you can pick up by watching this five minute clip over and over and over again about hypnotic technique, trans phenomenon, NLP anchoring, nested loops, because he's doing a lot here. Uh, but so he's about to describe um, driving in his Mazda and he sets up an anchor here an anchor for people to create an image. And so you'll, you'll hear him describe being inside that car and the car goes, hmm, let's see. And suddenly ideas would flash through my mind. And later on in the video, he uses this over and over again to help people to create images. So take a look. But I landed at night, got in my little Mazda with the rotary engine. The car that goes, hmm, let's see. <laughs> that was a great car to think in because when you, when you drove in it, it went, hmm, ideas kept popping into my mind. That's why, that's why we dedicated a book to it. So we would drive down the road. We'd both sit there and things would just flash in our minds. But as I was driving down, I was driving down Highway 1. I was just flying. I was, you know, driving what's casual for me, probably about 120 at night, you know, when there's no one around, you're allowed to do that as long as you don't get caught. And then when I came into town, you know, you go by and you stop at the first stoplight, and then you go through a 45-mile-an-hour zone. Now, suddenly, here I am driving 45 miles an hour, which is not that slow. But I felt like I wasn't moving at all. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever driven fast off a freeway. I mean, you know, it's one thing, it's one thing, 25 miles an hour, I, I've never even owned a car that will go 25 miles an hour, <laughs> right? I've, you know, even in first gear, the car is going, we can't go this slow. But even 45 miles an hour is fairly fast. Now, if you drive, you know, through a... 
So I'm gonna actually stop it here. Um, you know, you can find this full video on YouTube or obviously from their website, you can purchase it. And I, th I would recommend it because inside you get exercises for how to induce time distortion within yourself. So if you, you know, would like to be able to speed up or slow down your own sensations of time, you know, you can learn to do that deliberately. And what he's doing here before I paused it is he's actually semi-inducing the state for people with contrast. And one of the best ways to get people to go into a state is through fractionation. If you can have them be an experience of moving fast and then slow and then fast and then slow, between that disparity, they start to go into a state of time distortion. It's one way in which people experience time distortion naturally, right? If you're in a car and you're going 100 miles an hour and then you come to a crawl, it will feel like you are dragging yourself along. By the same token, if you're stuck in traffic and you're, you're idling in traffic and then suddenly a lane opens and you can just take off, it will feel as if the time is flying by. So he's inducing a state here in this last story. Now, I hope this is useful. Inside of this, what you're getting is a little bit of an understanding of how he used nested loops here, in, at least in my interpretation. I'd be interested to hear from other hypnotists or nelpers what you think is happening in this clip. Of course, I'd love to hear from Dr. Bandler himself. Uh, one way that you can learn this is to get out a piece of paper and then write story by story what the story is, begin to look for his tonal marking, his analog marking, and pay attention to when he starts and stops different stories. And then begin to look at what states is he eliciting? What, what strategies, if any, is he installing or eliciting? What are the anchors that are being used? And if you start to pay attention to this, it will greatly, greatly increase your NLP skill set. Now, if you want to increase your NLP skill set, there's a link below in which you can apply to be inside my NLP practice group and in which we practice NLP together, refine our skill sets, and we are uh, starting a nested loop uh, practice track next week. So click the link, apply to join, and here's to your mastery.